outside of Vegas. Got into the post office box. Time to get unburied. All right, so as mentioned, same as last time, probably not going to uh, read all of these letters. I should say I probably won't be reading them on camera in the video, but I will for sure be reading every single piece of mail that is sitting here. Greetings, Andy. Thanks for producing your vlog. Hope it continues to bring you vlog run good. I will keep it short with just the one question below, Max. P.S. If you happen to read this on your vlog, please give a shout out to my friend Aaron A, who turned me on to your production. Yo, Aaron A, good job. Thanks for spreading the word. Could you talk a bit how you deal with uh, negative thoughts about your playing style uh, after back-to-back -back downswing sessions? The most important thing that I do is I zoom out on the results. I look at the graph over a much longer term, much longer time frame than just the past couple of sessions. Uh, zoom way out, and if you're a winning player, you can kind of see that there will be lots of this going on, but it's probably like this, isn't it? The general thought is that the overall results graph is going in this direction in the long term. So it just shows that you're a winning player overall, and there's for sure gonna be bumps along the way. Nobody ever wins uh, all the time. Thanks for the $1 chip from Hollywood Casino in Kansas City, which I've never been to. Love to come to Kansas City. I've heard really good things. Andrew, I enjoy your vlog and refer others to follow along with one of the best fun and creative vlogs on the net. By showing the Win Encore Poker Room and Hotel, I decided to stay and play on our most recent trip. You're welcome, Encore and Win. Keep up the great work, Windshield Shy Pack. Yo, Shy Pack. Thanks for this uh, nickel from the Las Vegas Hilton. Not a, not a property that I frequent, so happy to add it to the collection. I'm actually mailing you because I have a few friends that watch your vlog too and they have plans to taking a year off before starting their masters to get into poker full time. Could you please recommend on certain things they should think of before proceeding with this? Wow, there's a lot here. Ben, I'll probably get to your questions, uh, maybe personally, I'll try and send you a message. Um, or you can send me a message, probably better because you got a lot of questions here and we are short on time. So Ben, shoot me a message uh, either on Twitter or Instagram or even on YouTube, that works, or email. The chip in the envelope is of the company I'm starting up, Gambling Reinvented. It says in Dutch. Gambling Reinvented. Good luck with that one, Ben. What do we have here? Hi, Andrew. I'm writing you from Finland. That's roughly 5,200 miles away. Please never stop blogging. Here's some, here's some traditional Finnish sweets. Sorry uh, in advance if you don't like them. Also, take this $5 that I forgot in my wallet from last summer. I was in Vegas. I'm not seeing $5 here, Mika. Um, also, number two, here's a couple chips from Casino in Finland. We only have one casino here. I see that. I do see all of this uh, candy that looks it looks like licorice to me. Ooh, that's bitter. Yeah, it's licorice. I don't mind a piece of licorice, but man, that's kind of strong and bitter. Oh yeah, that's not, that's no joke. Yeah, licorice, that's all licorice. Thanks Mika from uh, Finland. Just gotta get some water. Mmm. Hey Andrew, I had a most favorable poker weekend in Biloxi, thanks to you and your vlog. In the past, I would stay chained to the table, good or bad. This time I took many breaks, checked out to see what the local scenery had to offer. I got you a Biloxi envelope opener to say thanks and keep up the great vlogs. Sincerely, Tom. How do you play against a wild player? For example, that's half his stack pre-flop, then all in on the flop every round from every position. Um, how do I play? First of all, I never leave until they are uh, no longer there. And second of all, uh, in that exact situation, they bet half their stack pre-flop and all in on the flop every round from every position. Well, I mean, uh, I guess I would probably play just about any ace and uh, maybe like king queen and look to uh, get it in there with uh, maybe sixes or sevens or better than that. Gambled up with them uh, and also encourage them to keep having fun and making that table as fun as he's been making it. So yeah, you just gotta wait for a good hand. There's uh, obviously nothing you're gonna do as far as bluffing them. But uh, thanks for this uh, letter opener. Doing always wins. 
pretty good uh, sort of little uh, motto there. I think I know this is from, I don't see any letter in here, but I think this is from Mr. Felix, whom I've had a couple messages with online, but he is a fellow grinder, uh, hence grinding it up, hashtag grinding it up. He's on Twitch a lot, so he seems to um, have a really good attitude about everything. So go check him out, go check out Felix. And uh, thanks Felix. Doing always wins. Seems to make sense to me. It says fragile on it. Andrew, this is Rita. She's a real doll. Enjoy. Steve, keep up the favorable way you live. Well, Steven, uh, thanks for this doll from the Rio. How creepy do you guys think it would be if I carried this around with me during the World Series and uh, used Rio Rita as some sort of card protector slash good luck charm? Uh, thanks, Steve. Thanks for the doll. Andrew, thoroughly enjoyed the vlog, both for the info and because it's cool to watch someone evolve. Nice work. I've had this chip for like 30 years. Enjoy it. Be happy. Wow, 30 years? Are you sure you want to give up this chip that you've had for 30 years from Condado Plaza in San Juan, Puerto Rico? Thank you. Uh, I can't really read your signature here, so thank you, Michael from Los Angeles. This could be useful as well. Definitely useful. Look at this thing. Wow. <laughs> And it is engraved with a nice little message. Rather favorable, all the way unstuck. This I can use for this. Ruby, perhaps? Ruby K, I think. Goodbye, scissors. I've never had a knife. We're gonna have to be careful, but I think this will be very useful. It's tough to not want to uh, get carried away though. Looks like we got ourselves a uh, dough holder. Stow your dough. Thanks, Mark, for the dough holder. Something like that? I don't know, I don't know. I'll have to play with this a little bit and see if, if you need a place to hold your dough, you, you know how to do it now. You get a dough holder. Andrew, just want to thank you for taking the time to answer my questions uh, for my marketing project. I ended up getting a high A on it. Good job, Diego. Here are some chips from the Full House and Beach Club Poker Rooms in Eugene. Cool, uh, Diego, good job on that, that school project. Diego had some questions for a project that he was working on for college and uh, I fired over my answers and turns out he got a high A on it. Diego, good job. Thanks for the chips. Really enjoyed the scene, the scenery, beautiful land up there in the Pacific Northwest. Dear Andrew, many thanks for your blog. What a pleasure. Always a pleasure to watch your videos. For your collection, some chips from French casinos and one from the last poker room in Paris. Merci, monsieur. You like that? You like how I did that? Oliver. First French chips added to the collection. Look at these guys. Thanks, Oliver. Pretty cool to uh, be in touch with some people from other continents. The vlog audience is a very international audience and uh, now the chip collection is international as well, for sure. Uh-oh, we might be getting a little collection here. Andrew, I noticed you be open yo stuff with a kitchen knife. Here you go, a knife for that. Andres. Looks like a couple people had the same idea. This is a nice one as well. Old timer, it says on there. But we got the rather favorable all the way on stuck knife versus the old timer. It's kind of like new school versus old school kind of uh, knife opening, package opening. Some of you are definitely paid, paying attention to what's going on in these videos. Does this mean we can open packages twice as fast? No, that's, I don't think that's what that means. I think I know who this is from. Andrew and Boosie, we decided to wait until 50,000 subs to send you a gift. What you've done is no small feat. Boosie, great job with the shirts and for adding more life balance to the vlog. By the way, Nina wants to see more of you in it because she still doesn't care what a float or a check is. Ha. P.S. Hi, it's Nina. 
I work for Varilla and thought you might enjoy a few pouches of our brand new 60 second fully cooked microwavable pasta. Nina is my good buddy James's girlfriend. You guys met James in Chicago. And who doesn't love pasta? This is a uh, photo. James and Nina watching a video that is showcasing Busi and I, and they are apparently mimicking the facial expression. There's also this in here, which you guys uh, seem to have gone a little crazy with the gifts. Wow, here's a hoodie from uh, Nakatano. Man, what a guy, what a pal. It's a little warm here in Vegas, although it went down to like the 60s, I think, today. 50s, maybe. But uh, come WSOP time, this will be getting worn in the Rio, I'll tell you that much. This is, uh, this is comfy. This is nice and comfy. Yeah, you guys went a little crazy here with these gifts, but uh, it was great meeting you, Nina. Thanks for the pasta. Thanks for the sweatshirt, guys. Hi Andrew, this is another option of filming your sessions unnoticed. DJ from Fresno, California. Wearable bracelet video camera. The Bellagio is never gonna see this coming, huh? Eh? Apparently, you just slip this guy on, and voila. Another weapon in the arsenal. Apparently this is another band for it, if you wanna go orange. There you go, just be chilling there. Maybe like this. Nobody knows. I don't know. I don't know about all that. We'll see. The problem with the filming thing at the uh, casinos is that everyone's pretty well aware of the videos these days as far as the staff is concerned. So if they told me no phones on the table, no recording devices, and then I go ahead and do this and then the video shows up on YouTube, somebody alerts them to the latest vlog episode, they're going to want to have a talking with me. But I don't know. Maybe in uh, various situations we'll find a use for this, I think. Uh, it's always fun to check out like new little camera ideas and whatever, what have you. So, DJ from Fresno, thanks. Craft beer, bicycle, playing cards. Andrew, greetings from New York. The vlog is great. You've helped out my game quite a bit and as a token of my thanks, I thought you might like these craft beer playing cards. Jack. Thanks, man. Let's see, I wonder if there's anyone from uh, Michigan. Come on, there's gotta be, Michigan's gotta be, oh yeah, there you go. Bell's Brewery, representing Michigan, straight out of Kalamazoo. Nice, these are uh, making me a little bit on the thirsty side. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the playing cards, Jack. Putting this Biloxi uh, tool to work here. Postcard from Delaware Memorial Bridge. Mimi, love the different spots you take your viewers in Las Vegas when you're not playing poker. My wife and I visit Vegas every couple of years and we will be going to some of the places you've shown us in your vlogs, such as the Mandarin Bar. You're welcome, Mandarin Bar. Included are some chips from the three casinos in Delaware. Your fans, Katie and Brandon. Hey. Looks like we got some chips from Dover Downs, Harrington Raceway, Delaware Park Casino. Three $1 chips. Thanks, Katie and Brandon. Appreciate it. And uh, enjoy the Mandarin Bar when you guys go. Great spot. Hi, Andrew. Greetings from Michigan. Enclosed are a couple sets of small notebooks for you to keep in your pocket and jot down your next big idea. I'll be in Vegas in November wearing my new black on black favorable t-shirt. Ryan at Beach Tree Paper. Thanks for the notebooks. Always good to see a little entrepreneurial effort going on in, uh, in Michigan. Grand Haven is all the way over here. This is what we do for Michigan, in case you didn't know. See this? This is Michigan. Gross Point is somewhere over here. And Grand Haven is somewhere over here. Greetings, Andrew. I hope this finds you well and running good. Please find the enclosed items and thanks for all the work that you do to, to produce the blog. Since you're a fan of downtown, I've gotten you a $50 gift card for Triple George just down from the Pizza Rock. Please use it in good spirits with Boosie. I only ask that you find something that catches your eye in that location, snap it, and post it on Instagram. I anticipate you will get the vibe I am sending along. Dan, float that turn on Instagram. The Triple George Bar and Grill, $50. Buddy, thanks man. Really like this joint, so I'll be in there for sure. And thanks for the hat too. You are uh, spreading some serious good vibes here, man. All right, last one here. Go back to the uh, rather favorable knife.
Andrew, here's some stuff I no longer use or need. Enjoy. Thank you for all of the time and extra effort. Stu. Stu, this is a big box of stuff you got in here, man. Holy goodness. Wow. So apparently we got a bag here, camera bag. It's pretty sick. It looks like four gorilla pods with Joby ball heads attached to them. There's a Rode microphone in here with a dead cat muffler. Uh, some GoPro batteries and charger. <laughs> what in the world? GoPro attachments. Uh, another case. Yeti microphone. Okay, now I'm a little speechless here. A little bit speechless here. Chest mount for GoPro. Another mount of some sort for GoPro. Some more car chargers. Oh, and a uh, Hero 4, uh, a GoPro Hero 4. Uh, um, this is insane. This is a little bit insane. Uh, where did that note go? Some stuff I no longer use or need from Stu. Thank you for all your time and extra effort. Stu, are you for real? Uh, this is insanity. You just gave me like a GoPro camera? Um, what is there to say? Uh, thanks, thank you so much. Um, that microphone, this uh, Yeti microphone. I don't know, maybe we should like hop on a stream, hop on a Twitch stream or something and put this to use. I don't know, what do you guys think? Play some online poker or something? Talk into this thing? Guys, thank you. Thank you so much for all this stuff. Uh, if Boosie was here, she would thank you guys as well. But we'll be putting all this stuff to use for sure. A little bit blown away by the best blog watchers in the world. One of my buddies sent me a message about a game that is running in a place that we don't normally put into the rotation. That buddy goes by the name of Mr. Dorson. His name is actually Nojan, but some of you might know him as Mr. Dorson. He's a fellow poker vlogger here in Las Vegas. His, his cinematography is pretty awesome, pretty on point, I think. So you guys will have to check him out. I'll put a link down below to Mr. Dorson's channel. But he uh, messaged me about a game that's running over at Mandalay Bay right now. So I'm gonna go check out that game. It's only a 1-3 game, but there's lots of straddling going on and playing like a big 2-5 game, he said. So we're gonna find out for ourselves. Always fun to go visit a new property together. So let's go do that. I can use this, right? I'm just, going, I'm just going to the poker. Oh, you're just playing some poker right now? Yeah. Do you want to buy a VIP spot? It's $20 each card. No, it's fine. Here. We get some pillars. Don's going to be up there to take care of you. Thanks. Have a good night. $20 if you want to leave your car up front. I think I'm good on that one. Bay. I used to spend a lot of time here. When I first moved here, I used to play the 1-2 over here pretty frequently. It was always a pretty soft spot and pretty nice room. This is a pretty this is a pretty solid property right here in Mandalay, especially with the uh, the new tower which we've been to in a previous episode, the Delano. It's really sweet over there. The German. Yeah. Uh, the crap I'm running away because I saw Andrew coming into the game, so I'm running to the next casino. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we'll have to be we'll have to do this more often. We have to get together like this more yeah. often. You have my number, so just fix me. Taking this guy's seat. Yeah. 
All right, just sat in this 1-3 game, and the deal is that you can straddle under the gun or on the button up to $20. So I guess it depends how many people are actually straddling. Uh, that will determine how big this game is actually playing. But if people are straddling up to $20, that's a pretty big game all of a sudden. But I suspect that won't be the case uh, that often. So I'm just going to hop in there and see how it goes. All right, so one three, it's $1,000 maximum, so I'm in for $1,000 here. The button straddles for $12 in this hand. So we're playing one three twelve in this hand. There's a middle position limp, and I look down at pocket fives uh, in the cutoff. Since the pot is already uh, a little bit bloated here, I feel like limping in is probably the best play. Uh, stacks are not super deep, I don't think. The other players, the first limper probably has maybe 500. I'm not sure how much the button has, but probably somewhere similar, maybe a little bit more. So I just go ahead and limp along, and the button checks. The flop comes down jack 8-3 with two diamonds. The middle position player checks. I just decide to check, and the button puts out a bet. He bets $30, middle position player folds, and I just decided to let it go. I don't think pocket fives is doing too well against a range of uh, some over pairs and potential draws. So I just fold. So in this hand, there is only a, uh, a sane $6 under the gun straddle on in this hand. There's one limp. The small blind raises it up to $18. And I looked down at pocket sixes in the big blinds. Uh, once again, I think we're about $500 effective. So I feel like set mine is profitable here. So I go ahead and call in the big blinds. The straddler and the limper call as well. So four ways to a flop. King nine three with two diamonds. Small blind checks it. I don't see too much reason to start turning my hand into a bluff here. So I check it as well and action checks all the way through. Turn is another nine, offsuit nine. And this time the small blind just grabs a handful of chips and bets it. Turns out to be $60, I think. I just let it go. Everyone else folds as well. And the small blind shows us pocket kings for a rather favorable flop, you might say. Happy to uh, have not turned an offsuit six this time. So in this hand, I have the $6 straddle on, and we are a little bit shorthanded here, six players, and there are three limps to me. I looked down at pocket jacks, and it's definitely a hand I want to raise it up for value here, so I go ahead and make it $30 to go. I actually think I could make it a little bit bigger here with pocket jacks and three limpers, but $30 was my choice, and all of the limpers call. So four ways to a flop. Flop comes 8-3 deuce with two diamonds. Pretty safe flop for pocket jacks. We flop the over pair. There's a check to me and I am going to for sure bet here and I bet $70. Again, I think you could maybe even size a little bit bigger here with such a, uh, a, low, uh, a low flop and flush draw on board, maybe some potential straight draws as well. So maybe sizing uh, a little bit. Could even size a little bit bigger here, but $70 seems mostly appropriate. The first limper calls and the other two fold. So heads up to a turn card. Turns an offsuit four. Should be a pretty safe card for us. There's some gut shots that could have come in. Um, maybe a hand like ace five of diamonds, uh, six five of diamonds, something like that. But really aside from that, it seems like it should be a pretty safe card. So I go ahead and put out a, another C bet on the turn and this time I bet $160. First limper delivers some interesting news. He announces raise and then he says he's all in. So I ask, I ask for a count. It turns out to be about $260 more for the call. So not exactly a fist pump situation. Uh, it's possible he could have slow played a set. It's possible he could have turned one of these straights, uh, just drilled a gut shot of some sort. I don't think two pairs should be occurring too often, him limping under the gun, and uh, with this uh, board texture, seems somewhat unlikely, but who knows. Pocket jacks, not exactly a super nutted hand here. I don't expect any over pairs, but pocket jacks in my range here, towards the top, I would think. Uh, I could have sets occasionally, but Maybe really only pocket eights. I don't know if I would raise any of the other pocket pairs here. Free flop. I don't think I would ever have two pairs here either. So pocket jacks are a little bit towards the top of my range. I think maybe even at this uh, 
at this level, he could be going for uh, value shove, even with a uh, ace eight type hand, pocket nines, pocket tens, of course, as well. So, of course, there's some uh, some some value hands in his range there that we lose to, but. Uh, I think there are too many mixtures of hands here that we also beat and in the end it's not really that much more money so I go ahead and toss in the call since uh, calling is much more fun than folding is so we're off to the river card which is an offsuit six he shows us Queen nine offsuit so that hand's not gonna win. The pocket jacks are gonna win this hand. Pretty decent sized pot here for a uh, typical 1-3 game. Happy to uh, take this one down, happy to pocket the jacks. Make it all the way to the river as the winning hand. Is it surprising that he shows up with uh, queen nine offsuit here? Sure, it's a little bit surprising, but is anything really surprising anymore at uh, one 2 one, three table? If you wonder why I wanna see a lot of showdowns in live poker, why I want to uh, make a lot of calls on the river? It's because these situations have happened countless times. People show up with all sorts of holdings at any time, and I put in a uh, lot of hours here, the one, two, one, three stakes over my Vegas career. So these sorts of things don't really surprise me anymore. Uh, but surely, as you move up in stakes, these things happen less often. And uh, maybe I'm just slow to adjust as I move up in stakes regarding my river call frequency. That's good, huh? Mr. Dorson has as described, thanks for the uh, yeah, good, huh? Thanks for the invite over. Uh, we want a little bit. We want a couple hundred or something. <laughs> a couple of them. Two, three, four, five, six. Thanks, all. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Yep. Bye. See you soon, buddy. Yep. Just wrapping up that quick little session there. Uh, game ended up breaking pretty shortly after I got there. So I only played for about an hour, uh, but it went well. Started off a little rough there, whipping some flops, but Pocket Jacks does the job and we win $414 here. All right, just gonna call it a day here. Uh, pretty fun little trip down memory lane for me here. Like I said, this used to be one of a couple of spots that I used to frequent pretty hardcore uh, my first year or so when I moved here to Vegas. Really like the room over here. If you frequent the 1-2 and 1-3 games, this is uh, for sure a spot that's worth checking out. Would love to add this venue into the rotation uh, a lot more frequently if possible because it's such a cool spot. So um, I just, when I walked through there, there was like so many restaurants, uh, both new and old, that I would love to come back to following a session. So it'd be cool to get a, a game going, put a game together over here at some point. Just ideas, just kicking around ideas, you know? All right, wrapping it up here, back to it tomorrow.